All right, well, it's Friday. I took the day off today and headed out to the flea market in Canton, Texas, and uh, this place is huge. So I uh, picked up a few uh, new uh, tools out there, and um, I don't know. I've been on this hammer kick lately and uh, found this copper-headed hammer that I thought was pretty cool, so I got that one. And uh, this one here uh, is uh, just kind of unique looking, and it was a couple of bucks, so I got it. And this one's in really nice shape. It's a Craftsman. Don't know how old it is, but uh, the handle's in good shape on it. Kind of a cool looking piece. And, um, you know, made in the USA uh, back when they used to make them here. Uh, this one's kind of neat, too. It's a machinist uh, ball peen hammer that also has a flathead screwdriver, like it maybe came with some kind of equipment or something. And then uh, this guy here is. Uh, a uh, just like a shop made hammer it's got a uh, like a, a brass uh, insert uh, threaded onto it so I thought those were cool so uh, here also we uh, bought some clamps uh, hammers and clamps that's uh, all I seem to know how to buy and uh, this vice was I thought was neat it was uh, 10 bucks and uh, it was mark 15 got it for 10 and also bought a reamer uh, with it also that you'll see in another uh, shot but uh, it was made in West Germany, and um, it was something sharp was the name of it. And uh, I don't know, I don't think it's super old, but looking at the logo on it, it looks pretty old based on how the logo is made. Um, machinist clamps, I can't seem to get enough of these. I've bought a few of them already. I don't quite have one that small, uh, the smallest one there. Uh, so it was good to get that one. Uh, the bigger one is a Fowler brand, and that small one doesn't have a brand on it, but... Uh, they're both in nice shape, just need to uh, clean them up a little bit and uh, hit them uh, with a uh, little, uh, do a little brushing on them and, and uh, they should clean up nicely. These next two I, were marked $3 a piece and I gave uh, five for all three of those. And uh, they're just one and a half inch C-clamps, but the thing I liked about these two was they have a knurled uh, handle on them. And uh, a lot of times when you're trying to work with one hand and clamp something, you know, you... you uh, need to twist it and get it clamped up there while you're holding something with the other hand and uh, you know so it's, it's nice to have that uh, round knurled knob as opposed to the regular one with the t-bar you, know, you can't quite you know get it going the same way so uh, some pretty cool clamps good prices on those and uh, you know uh, uh, again I've already got about six or eight of these machines clamps and uh, you know I'll probably buy some more if I find them so um, Okay, up next we got this uh, uh, really good piece for a really steal of a deal. That is a Starrett 440 depth mic. And uh, I bought that um, along with two of those machinist clamps for 20 bucks for all of it. And uh, just looked on eBay and that exact mic uh, is going for anywhere from, uh, you know, 200 bucks up to as much as 400 and uh, so, you know, to have basically, you know, twelve, fifteen dollars in it or whatever is uh, is pretty much a steal. It's got a little roughness to it. I mean, just a couple little spots of surface rust that uh, hopefully we'll clean up. But uh, otherwise, it's in good shape. And I think it goes from zero to two inches. And uh, I don't have anything stare at. And if anybody's, any of you guys out there know anything about uh, machinist uh, tools and particularly measuring instruments, uh, Starrett pretty much is uh, the best that you can get, and they're very, very expensive. Uh, picked up this little uh, practical machinist guide. It's pretty cool. It's got a lot of uh, charts in it, you know, decimal to fraction conversions and, um, you know, metric to to standard and, and uh, cool stuff like that. And I've uh, got this little rule as well, which has measurements in tenths and one hundredths. So, uh, uh and then uh, also picked up this uh, three-in-one oil can. Used to see these when I was a kid and thought this one was neat, so uh, decided to go ahead and get it. All right, so uh, I believe I got a great deal on this also. This is a lot of 22 uh, reamers in their new old stock, never been used before, and they're super sharp. Um, and they're in a variety of different sizes and so forth, and they're made by Cleveland twist drill and they're uh, high speed steel. They're not, uh, they're not carbide, but they're high speed steel. Still, you know, good, uh, good machine quality uh, uh, tooling to use. And I don't own any reamers and we've been thinking about getting some. 
and uh, these are all in the you know odd sizes like uh, you know 21 64ths and uh, and that kind of thing when you need a a hole that you know you've got that's at you know let's say half inch and you uh, you need something to be uh, a 64th larger than a half inch and you don't want to drill it well you can get a real accurate uh, cut with a reamer this is a carbide reamer here and um, I got that from another guy but I got those reamers 22 of them for 40 bucks and they're going on eBay for like uh, uh, 15 to 25 dollars a piece so uh, again that's Cleveland twist drill on those and uh, so that was a good deal all right so this last piece I really couldn't resist um, it was one of those where when you get your mind made up on something you're you're pretty much gonna buy it they were asking 200 bucks for it and I uh, offered them 150 and they end up uh, taking 160 for it it came out of a print shop um, in uh, Brooklyn New York it's got a, a plate on the front of it there uh, you know with the information on it but it's a um, I thought it'd be cool to keep uh, the tooling and uh, bits and, you know, drill bits and end mills and all the stuff that goes with the mill um, in something like this that's kind of a, an old industrial looking uh, piece. It looks like something that you'd find on a shop floor or, you know, in a manufacturing place. So Peters and Charles Manufacturing Company, Brooklyn, New York. Um, so here's a question. It, it's, uh, you know, got some lot surface rust, as you can see in the top left there. And uh, down around the bottom of it, it's it's uh, got quite a bit of surface rust on it. And um, so should I leave it like it is and just leave all the original patina? Or should I just, you know, convert the rust and do a basic cleanup on it? Or should I prep it, prime it, and, you know, paint it with base coat and clear coat in, in something that's, you know, kind of a subtle color like a machine gray or, um, you know, something like that. So let me guys, let me know what you guys think about uh about painting it and uh, what do you think I should do? All right, just thought I'd share these uh, flea market finds with you guys today. Thanks, thanks for watching.